Hello everyone, welcome to Study Tech. In the previous video, we have seen how to calculate average voltage, RMS voltage, and form factor. Now, in this video, we are going to learn how to calculate the recoil factor and the voltage regulation. So, let us see how they are calculated. First, we will take the recoil factor. Before exactly coming to the mathematical expression for the recoil factor, let us understand it physically. The dictionary meaning of the ripple is that a small or the series of waves in the surface of water, especially as caused by a slight breeze or an object dropping into it. That means the scenario is something like that. When you drop something in the water, you see there is some waves. That is the ripple. So here in the half wave rectifier, we get this sort of output voltage. But our requirement is a steady one, but we do not get that steady. We get some sort of change in the output voltage. So how much change is involved in this waveform that is our interest. And through ripple factor, we try to measure how much change is involved. In general, a waveform can be something like this, where a DC part is there and there is a changing part is there and that changing part is the AC part. This is a general waveform where we see there is a DC part and there is a AC part. And in case of pure DC, the AC component is zero, so the waveform will be the straight one like this red one. And in case of pure AC, this DC part is zero. That will make the alternating voltage will lie at the zero axis and the average voltage will be zero. This is the definition of AC voltage, pure AC, the which average voltage is zero. The ripple factor measures how much AC is involved in this DC part, right? Lesser the ripple, better the DC is. And our goal is to make the ripple free. Ideally, the ripple should be zero and ripple factor should be zero. But in practice, there will be some amount of ripple. Using filters, we can reduce this ripple. We will see later on. Now, the definition of the ripple factor is that the RMS value of the ripple component by the average or the DC value. So average and the DC, they are synonymous. So how the ripple factor is calculated? we have to calculate this AC part's RMS value, right? And that RMS value of this AC part divided by this DC is equal to the ripple factor. Now the question, how can we calculate the RMS value of this ripple or the AC component? The whole waveform is this one and the ripple part is this one. So to calculate the RMS value of this particular ripple component, we take the help of this expression where VRMS is the RMS value of the whole waveform, right? And VACRMS is the RMS value of this AC component. So we can write this one, okay? So now from this, we can calculate the RMS value of the AC component to be under root VRMS square minus VDC square. Look, directly we cannot calculate the RMS value of the ripple component. We know for the complete waveform, the RMS value is known to us and the DC value is known to us, right? And in the RMS value of the whole waveform, the ripple is involved and that is equal to VRMS square equal to VAC RMS square plus VDC square. And from here, we are calculating the RMS value of the AC component or the ripple component. Now, from the definition of the ripple factor, we can write the RMS value of the ripple component as root over VRMS square minus VDC square divided by average or the DC value. Always remember, in the numerator, there is the RMS value of the ripple component, not the RMS value of the whole waveform, right? And from the mathematical expression, we are getting this one. So the ripple factor will be root over VRMS square minus VDC square by VDC. Now coming back to the waveform of the half wave rectifier, we got this sort of waveform, right? From Fourier series, we know that any periodic waveform can be represented by a DC value plus its harmonics. So we can say the output of a half wave rectifier is also a periodic waveform. So this will also contain a DC value plus the harmonic components, that is the AC component, which is nothing but the ripple. So the half wave rectified waveform includes a DC value plus the ripple component, right? Knowing the average or the DC value and the RMS value of the waveform, the RMS value of the ripple component can be calculated from this equation. 
the v average is equal to vm by pi we have seen v rm is equal to vm by 2 right now putting these values in the expression of ripple factor we will get v rm is square minus vdc square by vdc right so this will be root over form factor square minus 1 because v rms by v dc square will come that is nothing but the form factor this is also another definition of the ripple factor or the relationship between the ripple factor and the form factor that is ripple factor equal to root over form factor square minus 1 and the result will come to be 1.21 so we have to remember this one the ripple factor for the half wave rectified waveform is equal to 1.21 Next, we will see how to calculate the voltage regulation. Exactly before coming to the mathematical derivation of voltage regulation, let us look at this. The secondary of the transformer is represented by this one. This is actually the equivalent circuit of the secondary of the transformer. As because there will be some resistance, so the secondary of the transformer is represented by the voltage in series per there is some small resistance. Now our diode will have some resistance. This both resistance will cause in some voltage drop when the half wave rectifier is loaded there will be some voltage drop in the diode and in the secondary resistance so we will not get the output exactly equal to the input voltage there will be some voltage drop as the load current is increased or as the load resistance is decreased there will be more drop in this two element there will be lesser voltage in the output so we are interested in calculating how much difference is there when the half wave rectifier is loaded from its unloaded condition right so to calculate that we have taken this equivalent circuit now the definition of the voltage regulation is that the no load voltage minus the full load voltage divided by the full load voltage now how do we calculate the no load voltage we know that the v no load equal to the vdc equal to vm by pi and that can also be written as idc into r load because this voltage is calculated considering the ideal secondary and the ideal diode means there is no voltage drop and we got this voltage earlier so that can be treated as the no load voltage now what will be the full load voltage the full load voltage we can calculate by subtracting the drop at the secondary and the diode and that will be idc into this two series resistance and that we can subtract from the v no load and we can get the full load right this full load voltage will keep changing if we change this idc value now putting all these in the expression of the voltage regulation we will get v no load minus v full load by full load and this will be idc into r secondary plus r diode divided by idc into r load and the expression of the voltage regulation will be simply r secondary plus r diode divided by the r load right so this is the calculation of voltage regulation and the ripple factor so in this video we learned how to calculate the ripple factor and how to calculate the voltage regulation. In the next video, we will see how to calculate the efficiency and transformer utilization factor. If you are new to this video, let me tell you study ETEC is dedicated for you. This is about us. A little bit help is required from your side and that help motivates us to make better content. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our Facebook page and visit our website. See you in the next video. Thank you.